A priest is a person that has control, that is in charge of his spiritual life. A priest is even a person that people go to for their own spiritual for their own spiritual issues. So when the Bible says since God has made us kings and priests unto our God, it says that we have a blend of kingship, that is dominion in our physical life, and priesthood, that is dominion in our physical life. In every kingdom where there is a king, you also see the chief priest. In several, mo in several mo movies, you see that the chief priest is another layer of authority and is the cheapest in that part. Even though the king has authority over everybody, but there is a level of respect he upholds the chief priest because he is the one that has the ears of the gods. Even though those gods are dead. But that is the picture painted onto us. So now imagine a king who is also a priest, or a priest who is also a king. And it was in David that we saw this perfect image. A man was, who was not just a king and priest, but even a prophet, which we can still measure and say is a king and priest. So when the Bible said he has made us king and priest, he is saying we are the king, we are the priest. We don't need any man to stand between us and God. But unfortunately, several believers are not reigning as a king. They are not reigning as a priest. And that was how I am making these two videos. The first one, how to reign as a king on the earth, because the Bible says, and they shall reign on earth. And the second one, how to reign as a priest in your spiritual affairs, reign on the earth. Every day of your, of, your, of your life on the earth, you are in dominion, you are in charge, you are not in crisis. You have dominion over demons, over Sabbath and scorpions, over every power of the enemies, anything spiritual. You can take charge of it. I said in that in that teaching on how to reign as a king that the problem many of us have is that we ask why instead of asking how. Why am I being oppressed? Why am I being pressed down? I was a prayer warrior in my school fellowship and I was still being pressed down. I was a prayer coordinator. I was still being pressed down. Even much after I've given my life to Christ, I still get pressed down. The most times I get pressed down is after a serious vigil and I go to sleep. These days I finish vigil, I go to lie down, and I remember the days that when I finish vigil and lie down, I get pressed down by the devil. But I pray for you and I pray with you. That as you listen to this teaching, as you watch this video, understanding will come into you. The Lord will release utterance, the Lord will help me indeed to be able to speak His mind. And will receive utterance. You will release utterance and you will have understanding and wisdom. And you that used to be a weak person, the devil used to torment, you will not be the one tormenting the devil. How oh, I love that book that I wrote, Mocking the Devil. You begin to mock the devil in every area of your life, indeed, and sport in Jesus' name. So, let's go back to our text. For he has made us kings and priests unto our God, that we may reign on the heart. Revelation 5 verse 10. Everybody knows that they are supposed to be kings. They know they are supposed to be priests. But the issue is, they don't know how. They know they are kings. They know they are priests. They still get oppressed because they don't know how. The Bible says the labor of the of the fool weary every one of them out because they don't know how to go into the city. So I'm going to advise you to get that teaching. And if you have gotten it, how to renounce the king. Beautiful. Now the priestly office is mainly the prayer office. A priest in the Old Testament stands between man and God. But we in the New Testament, we have, we don't need anyone to stand on our behalf. But it's a pity. Many of us still need to go through someone to meet God. We are to stand and have dominion and be in control 
in the spiritual life to be both demonic powers and authorities. The Bible says you shall tread upon them and they shall by no means ought you. Jesus speaking in the book of Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. He says, And these signs shall follow them that be thee. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Jesus listed five things in Mark 16, 17. To intend that a new believer, a baby believer must be able to do. You know what Jesus put first? In my name they shall cast out devils. But it's a pity. Thank you, Lord. Many of us have been casted around by the devil. I can feel the power of God so much upon me. And God is telling me that men will get their vibration. Even as you watch this, we are the ones that now need <laughs> that now need to be delivered from the devil. Why the Bible says we will cast out devils. Many speak in tongues. See, the basic is to cast out devils. <laughs> the higher version, you know, where we cast it in step, cast out devils, speak in new tongues. Speak in new tongues is higher than cast out devils, right? But many of us can speak in new tongues, which by chronological order is the higher level, is the higher level. But we are still not we are still not able to cast out devils. They will still cast us out. Because we speak, you despite that we speak in new tongues, the issue is that we don't know how. We don't know how to stand in our priesthood, in our priest office. A priest is in charge of his dreams. A priest is in charge of his dreams. They wouldn't just come and oppress you. They don't just show you things in your dream and you start panicking around. Many people know that they are supposed to pray. But when a snake bites you in the dream, when most people are you, they are supposed to pray. But the problem is, how are you praying? And that is where the issue is. Not that people don't know that they're supposed to pray. Thank you, Lord. They pro- you are getting your vibration. Yeah, I don't know who specifically right now, but I see God doing wonders. You may begin to feel the power of God crushing all over you. Thank you, Lord. Now, you may, you may, you might have prayed. But not pray right. I used to say that what believers do the most is to pray. And what we do the least is to pray. Because we don't know how to pray the right way. We don't know how to pray. And the reason we have issue with our spiritual life is a very fundamental thing. We don't know that there are different kinds of prayers. There are different kinds of prayer. Every prayer is not God. Do it. God, give me. A few minutes before I come into this studio, my wife was having an issue in her tummy. And she said, Lord, the Lord will put you in Jesus' name. I said, Amen. So after some minutes, I told her, the Lord will put you. She said, Yes. I, I laughed. I said, That's a wrong prayer. You don't ask the Lord to rebook stomach pain. We thought everything called prayer is God do it. God cast it out. God give me. You pray that way and you say and you receive answers at times. But when you don't receive answers, just know that your daughter has refused to apply the right key and to play right. You may receive answers in some instances. They want to receive 100 percent answer. I used to say it. I don't have any unanswered prayer. Not that I say it because I think or I wish. It's the fact everything I pray gets answered because I know how to pray. And like I said about the subject of faith in the first video I did, if you have never learned, studied, been taught, been schooled on how to pray, they didn't take you through a teaching series. You didn't watch a series video or go through your course or read books or hold you on the subject of prayer. And you are praying because you are born again. My dear, you are not praying. You are playing. 
If you want all your answers, all your answers, all your answers, answer. You don't want any unanswered. I will still go to say some place in this teaching. And you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. I told my wife, you do not tell God to rebook the stomach pain. You rebook it. And she said, I rebook you in Jesus' name. And that was all. I remember a lady like that. She was chatting with me on WhatsApp. She was lamenting. Okay, she was telling me something. It's not lamenting passing, but also lamenting anyway. That she wanted to leave the school where she was teaching. She wants to get another job in another place. But she has difficulty living because they are family, friends, blah, blah, blah. And she does not like this class that they are giving her to, to teach. So I asked her, what really is the problem? Is it the class you are teaching that they gave you to take? She said, yes. Do you want to change the class? She said, yes. So I told her, then pray. Pray. But I told her, pray. Type your prayer because she was chatting with me on WhatsApp. Let me see the prayer you would pray. When she type everything, Father, I thank you. You are the King of Kings, Lord of Lord. You know I'm a sinner. And she kept praying. She typed many things. The only thing she did not do was to pray. She said several things. The only thing she did not say was that she did not pray. So I told her, dear, you have not prayed. You have not prayed. You command the spirit of the person in charge to change your class. And I taught her how to pray. And she prayed here and there. When the school resumed on Monday, the next month, the next Monday, the after her assembly, the man just called her and said, maybe oh my, oh my, oh my, I'm not sure. He just called her. He said, come. Now, you are leaving this class, you are going to this class. The exact class she mentioned to me was the class she was giving. That's prayer. That's prayer. That's how prayer should be. Prayer normally should be followed with answer. If our prayers is not followed with answer, then there's something wrong in our system. There's something wrong with the way we approached our prayer. So, everything is not God give me. It's not God do. For instance, we ask God, God, please heal me. God, please, pro please pro provide. These are wrong ways to pray. These are wrong ways to, to pray. The Bible, in the book of Ephesians 6, 18, Yes, it's 18, NIV says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So there are different kinds. As a priest, you must know these kinds. You must know these kinds to know the one to apply. So I introduce you to four kinds of prayer. So I didn't say there are, there are only four, but these are the basic, the primary four. Number one, you rebook the devil. Number two, you claim your blessings. Number three, you command human spirit or any situation. Number four, you ask for grace and mercy. I take it again. You rebook the devil. You claim your blessings. You command evil spirit. You command evil spirit. You command spirits and situations. And number four, you ask for grace and mercy. The only thing you are meant to ask for, to say, God, give me, God, do it for me, is grace and mercy. Every other thing, you are in charge. When you see the devil, you rebook the devil. The Bible, Luke 4, 35. Luke 4, 35. And Jesus rebooked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, it came out of him and ought him not. You see, Jesus issued, issued a command. He said, I rebook you. To rebook also means to cast away. I rebook you, the devil. I forbid you. You can, you can use other words like I decree or I command out. It's still fine. But for specific understanding, Jesus rebooked the devil. Now look at Acts 16, 16, Acts 16, 18, Acts 16, 18, and did. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, 
I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. I command thee to come out. It's the same thing as I rebook as used in that scripture. So you rebook the devil to pack off in Jesus' name. Don't ask God to come and help you to rebook. God help us to rebook the devil. God help us to forbid the devil. God help us to forsake the devil. It's wrong. That is why you get answer today, you don't get answer tomorrow. And you say, and I pray, 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 pray. Or you say, and I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. See, you are praying in the wrong way. And what, what do you blame for that? Who do you blame for that? Who do you blame for that? Yourself. You are not have refused to grow since you gave your life to Christ. But you are coming upward now in the name of Jesus. If the disease looks demonic, if the situation looks demonic, you command the demon to live and it lives. Then you now begin to apply normal, normal treatment and the person gets healed. The person and the youth is demonic. Command the devil to go out. That's your first badge. As a newborn believer, the power to rebook. Then you claim your blessings. You do what? You claim your blessings. Blessings are not to be begged for. Blessings are not to be asked for. Because they are not with God. God give me money. Money is not with God. Your money is not with God. Your money is not with God. God heal me. Your healing is not in the hands of God. Your healing is in your hands. Your money is here on this earth. Ephesians 1 3. Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Who has blessed us? What tense is that? Amplified says, Blessed and worthy of praise. Thank you, Lord. Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in every presence in Christ. Who has blessed us? What tense is that? That is past participle. Because whenever you see us have had, the verb that follows is past participle. Who has blessed us? Who has given us? Who has released to us? All means all, all spiritual blessings. So when God has given you all, if I've given you and are still asking me for it, then you have a problem. Either you have a comprehension problem, or that all oh, 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 you, oh, you, oh, you are not normal. Because I've given you money, and you are still asking me for money. So this is why devil take advantage of us, and devil cheat us. So when God has blessed you with it, where is it? It is floating in the spiritual realm, waiting for you to claim it. There is, a, there is an app. Some of us know the app in Nigeria. It is called OP. This app will give you, it's, it's, it's a fintech, it's a fintech app. So, it's a fintech comp company. They, there is an amount they will give you as bonus every day. Maybe 10 naira. Maybe two nera, maybe eight nera, eight nera also. So there's a place on the hub where you go to claim. There are some people who claim it every day, every blessed day. They enter the hub to claim their rewards. Somebody like me, I don't get to claim it. I don't even remember. So some so people, some of you, you don't even know. They are just hearing for the first time. And when I now go to that page on the hub, I will see the reward of past days that, can, that cannot be claimed again because they are past. It's only the present day that you can claim. The same way when God has blessed you with money and you don't have the money, where is the money sitting? The money is sitting in the spiritual realm. The money is floating in the spiritual realm and you are not assessing it. You are not assessing it. So how do you assess it? You claim it. You claim it. And if you claim it and nothing happens, maybe there is a force stopping it. So you command that force to get out of the way and you 
rebook the devil. You rebook that force to release it, and then you play. For instance, you are in need of money for your school fees. 200k is your school fees. And the Bible says, I have blessed you. I have given you money that you will need for all your schooling. So what do you do? Father, I thank you. Oh, you have blessed me $20,000 to pay my school fees. In the name of Jesus, every power of darkness holding my $200,000 for my school fees, I rebook you. I command you. Pack off now. In the name of Jesus. Now the money is in the spirit realm. You need somebody that can interplay within the spirit realm. Interface within the spirit realm and the physical realm to get the money across onto you. That is where your angels come in. That's where angels come in. And you tell the angels, I command, get the money out for me. Get the money out for me in the name of Jesus. Some people will say, we don't command the angels. Let me finish what I'm saying. So you tell the angels to command, to get the money out. Father, I thank you for your provided toilet care for me for my school fees. Devil, take a hand of my money. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Angels, get it some the thousand naira across to me in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I receive some thousand naira and I claim it in Jesus' name. Then sit back and watch what God will do. I thank God may send somebody to you. God may give you an advice. You might have put up something out for sale to just get sold. Your parents will just call you. It can come. It, I, have, I have done this several times for 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 little amount, for huge amount, and it always work. It always work. So you command, and so some people will say, "We can't command angels." These are not subjected to us. The Bible says angels obey the word of God. So when you speak the word of God. They will say, angel can only obey God. Okay? And God lifts his word above his name. So when you speak the word of God to angels, they obey. They obey. And that's it. Praise God. So that is how to reign as a priest. That is how to pray. You are sick. Don't beg for healing. They book the sickness. They book the devil. They claim your illness. I said number one, number one, we'll rebook the devil. Number two, we'll claim our blessings. Number three, we'll command human spirits, angels, situation, including evil spirits. When we talk about it, we'll rebook evil spirits. So that settles it. The third form, the third kind, our approach to prayer, that we we'll command angels, human spirits, and situation. The real man is not the soul or the flesh. The same way demons can influence people to do things against their will, you can orchestrate angels to make people to do things against their will, but positive things this time around. Your father is supposed to pay your school fees, but he has refused to. Get down with the spirit. Father, I thank you because you gave me power over, you gave me dominion over all things, including what I need. Now my money is my dad. And so, that I command your spirit, man, to give me the money. Every devil, human beings, that are blocking your ears, blocking your mind, for giving me the money for paying my school fees, in the name of Jesus, I rebook them right now. Now, Angels of the Lord influence my dad to get the money across to me right now. So I speak to you. Give me the money for my school fees. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. I claim it. That's it. Customers will leave your shop. Go to the shop of the person using charm. It's simple. It's simple. Every evil spirit working with my with my neighbor, bringing customers to her, I command you stop working. <laughs> stop working. Angels of God, because the Bible says, it shall bless the work of my hand. It is already there in the Bible. Angels of God direct people to me. I command you, everybody that comes to this market today, I influence your spirit man right now. Come and buy from me. Come and buy from me. We have an unbelieving family member 
get control of that spirit man. The only thing about getting control and commanding the spirit of a man is that you have to keep repeating it, the prayer. You have to keep repeating the command. Because because they are spirit man and they have what we call will, they can change their mind suddenly. Devil can influence their will. But once you keep the prayer on, I command your spirit man, I command you to call, to give it. You will see it get answered. That is how to read. Like the day that I told you about a school, as I told you about a school, that was what I did. I thought, I said, command your boss to change your class from this class to that class. And lastly, what do we ask for? We ask for grace and mercy. That is the last kind, last approach to prayer. We ask for grace. And when I say ask, in this case, you know, ask the book of and ask, claim, come using that changeably. It's different in 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 in, in, in context. So the reason you are permitted to ask God to do for you is to ask for His help. Talk about wisdom. You claim wisdom. You claim wisdom because He has blessed with us spiritual blessings. So when you see the Bible say, ask for for wisdom, He's saying claim. In that case, when you say ask for grace, ask for mercy, they say ask for it. That's the only thing you are permitted. So ask for. I say I have many more teachers on prayer. We have school of prayer. I have teachers on prayer. You can get them both on our Telegram channel and the YouTube page. So the last thing I want to tell you about prayer, about the office of a priest, is that our main duty is to intercede. And the whole testament, priest intercede. You see, all this go to the mother. God, give me power, 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 power. If you listen to my teacher on how to heal the sick, you begin to heal the sick immediately. You don't need to go and ask for it. Power, power, power. I've told you my story before. I wanted to heal the sick. I wasn't getting to heal them. So what do I do? I have to go, go tonight. I have prayed that I fasted tonight. You must give me the power to eat. I said, son, go and, go and study. Go and read. When you finish reading, come back and pray. I didn't return to pray. I studied. God, the light went on to heal. I said, no, man, ask me. I want power. I said, power to do what? He told me. I said, do you mind baptizing people in the Holy Ghost? He said, yes. Taught him how to do it. And he baptized like 50 people in two weeks. That is power. So you are not meant to ask God. Money, 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 money. Deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. That is what you spend your time to do. No! 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 He has blessed you with those things. Your duty is to intercede. Perhaps said Zachariah was there interceding, office as a priest, then the angel came to visit him, and he got his child. The ministry of an intercessor is a rewarding ministry. That is our primary duty as priest. As priest. For our own personal needs, we just command, we just claim. For our ministry, for instance, every Monday we would, we would vigil on our vigil online. Anybody you can choose for any, any, any hour in the night time. You pray. What do you pray with? Intercede. Every day we appear on the altar, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. What do we do? Intercession session. Wednesday we fast and pray. What do we pray about? Intercede. Friday we fast and pray. What do we pray about? Intercede. How about our own need? We claim. I if somebody is sick, we heal the sick. That is the way it is done. As you step into your priestly office today, you will travel for every area of your life. You have a dream, you saw something in your dream, you will claim, you will kill. Somebody is pursuing you, your dream wanted to kill you, woke up, and you are happy because you woke up. Go back to your sleep and kill the person because you are in charge, you are in control. The Lord bless you, I told you, this teacher just have to. Limited to what I want it to focus upon. We want an extensive teaching on prayer. You can get to our school of prayer, all the messages that I have on prayer. Thank you.